everyone. Welcome back to Clairvoyant. I'm Chris and I'm your Clairvoyant. And today I'm going to do another very short reading and then I have um, some things to talk about that are kind of unusual that I've been kind of getting lately. So hopefully they're, they're helpful at this time. I hope that you're all doing well. I hope that, um, I know it's a struggle for everyone. Um, if nothing else i hope that you are having more good times than difficult times and hopefully we'll be able to help with some of that i'm going to go ahead and shuffle i'm going to just pick one card it's kind of our card for the day um see the message that it has and then we'll go on so let me go ahead and shuffle and we'll do that i'll turn the, the computer down so you can see once more All right, here's our one card. Let's see what we've got. Oh, well, that's kind of perfect. This is the Temperance card. And uh, Temperance is a fabulous card to get, um, not only for the, the message, but the imagery. Look at the, the angel here. This, this idea of... Um, balance that's what temperance is about this is about balance but also you see the, the foot in the water that denotes our our inner selves and we are balancing that right now right we're balancing our all of our inner emotions with what's happening in the outside world um it's difficult it's very difficult um a lot of people point out in this card that the water is flowing from the bottom to the top. Um, I think it can be seen as both ways at different times and maybe um, simultaneously, where we are receiving messages from above and sending messages, sometimes please, <laughs> but prayers to, to those on the other side, to the non-physical world. But I think above all, this is a message of hope to be, um, that we, so that we know that we are being helped aided, watched over, watched over. I mean, that's important. And um, as I was shuffling, speaking to my guides, one of the things that I asked for in a card um, was something that could help me lead into what I'm about to talk about. And so um, that's pretty perfect. Uh, because what I wanted to mention is that over the past um, I don't know, while, it's been a while, but um, Actually, for many years, I've had this kind of desire and this hope to be able to channel more, but I didn't really know the form that that could take. Um, as I've done you know, more and more and more readings, I often feel a very strong connection to the person that I'm reading for's guides. Um, sometimes it's very personal. Sometimes a specific person will sort of come forward, someone who... Um, either has a message or often just wants the person I'm reading for to know that they are there, that they're being watched over and um, that they that they still are there because it's often a person they've lost um, in this physical life. So that has happened, but um, I've just recently been able to feel that I'm getting to a point where I could actually sort of um, at times channel messages. I did a, a, a video just about a few weeks ago and where I had felt that I had a, a channeled message. And um, I, I haven't quite known how to do this in that um, I could, you know, record myself, I can just write, I can, you know, I, I wasn't sure what form it would take since I'm doing this um, by myself and on my own, especially now. Um, but what has happened is that in meditation, as I've tried to connect to a specific group of guides, um, I'll just have started getting phrases and words and ideas and pictures. And I was just so um, sort of compelled, as I talked about in the last video, to write things down. So that has happened over the past couple of days, and I wanted to share the messages with you. Um, I will say, I Again, and I think I mentioned this before, that 
what I feel like is happening because I know I have one guy that I work with work with all the time that helps me with um, readings and things like that um, and then you know other you, as we all do you know we have those spirits who are around us and who help us all the time often people as I said have passed on but over the past um, several weeks I felt like this new it's like a group of guides and as I've connected to my guide and sometimes even as I'm doing readings for people they're like sort of in the background like a semi-circle of them in the background and I knew that these were um, masters as I mentioned masters who were helping see us through this time and I started sort of referring to them in my head as the pandemic masters and that was I think it was kind of a um, they were kind of like okay um, but I do have a new phrase that came to me today that I'll talk about toward the end of this this is kind of short but um, I did want to get this message out but I, I did have this feeling of this new name. And as I said, it's like a group um, that is channeling one message through me. So the first thing I got, and this was um, yesterday that I wrote down, is that, um, that there is a constant. There is a constant. You know, we're feeling so much upheaval and change, but there is a constant. And this constant is, is you and me it's our, our, our love. This is the constant. Love is the constant. Truth. But love is truth. Truth is love, you know. So, so there is a constant. And it's important that we represent that now, even though we feel like um, our lives are in upheaval. You know, it's so many people that I've talked to, um, friends and family, have said it feels surreal. And it does. And yet it's, it's so important that we sort of, face it and provide a constant, especially for our kids, especially in our children's lives. Now I want to talk a little bit about um, the Trump administration and him and Trump himself. Because what I saw was an image of him surrounded by a wall. And you know that one image that they've showed of the, the wall that's going up in the southern border, but it's like, it's almost like a, a red looking metal. That's kind of what I saw and surrounded by him. Um, and what you have to understand, what, what they said to me is that the thing about this wall is that it's always penetrable. Now they feel this whole group that sort of is indulging him, allowing him to go forward Trump himself, but sort of his enablers, and also his backers, because there are people who not only enable him, but are like, you know, gung-ho on all of this. Um, so the thing is that they feel like this wall um, protects them, like they have built this structure around them that they feel like is impenetrable, but it's not. In fact, it's, that's couldn't, nothing could be further from the truth. It's the illusion of being protected because what they're seeing in their head is and what I saw in this sort of um, visioning kind of thing is the is like a hamster ball you know those those plastic balls like they think that they're inside of that and protected so completely but the truth is if they were protected that completely they would suffocate they would be suffocated it, it, it their plans like couldn't go forth so the, the idea that they're trying to get across, that these guys were trying to get across, is that they're not um, impenetrable, they're not um, immortal, they're in the, in the physical world sense, um, they're not um, as strong as they think they are as far as followers, as far as abilities, as far as how much we are... Um, willing to or will put up with there are just all kinds of ways that they can be um, that they feel invulnerable you know and and it's not true they're they're vulnerable in so many ways um, not the least of which is is there they have the same vulnerability that we all do when it comes to 
this um, illness that's going around, but also just their political rear careers, the things that they want to do, um, the people that they think will support them. It's all, it, it's all penetrable. And that actually is, will be their great undoing, is that, you know, they feel like they are in vulnerable, you know, and they feel like they're encased in this protective uh, coating that's like glass and that will protect them, but it's, it's not true. And if they try to do that, if they try to seal themselves off that much, it will be fatal for them, right? Um, okay, so this is kind of strange, but I think it's because obviously it was in the news about um, uh, Robert Kennedy's granddaughter and great-grandson who passed away in a very tragic accident. And um, I guess that was just in my mind. Um, but the, but it came through, something came through about that, and that was that um, Kennedy and so many in the Kennedy family who have come into the Kennedy family, you know, planning their lives as part of this family for this reason, they have um, planned lives of sacrifice. And if you look at these lives of sacrifice that have happened again and again, they've come at important times that were almost like catalysts, almost like wake up calls, almost like, you know, this and this and this happens. We sort of put up with it. And then it's like shaking you and, and forcing us to look at something in our grief, in our anger, in our shock. And I also want to say that Martin Luther King was part of this too. This idea of shaking us to our core through our our shock and our grief and our shared grief and our understanding that we share grief you know that's one of the things that that we share or that one of the things that makes us realize how connected we are how similar we all are and how the same not just similar how the same we all are so the idea is that um, so often the, the power that people feel they possess is, is like a misguided power. And it's also not nearly as strong. It's certainly not as strong as love and the love that is washing over the planet right now. So um, there's, there's a, among them, and this goes not only with like the current administration, many in the GOP, but also sort of the billionaire class, the ultra, ultra rich class. What they said is that there's a, a mistaken belief um, that their growth in power eliminates power in others, which nothing could be further than the truth because the, the power that we all possess is our unity our strength in unity, and of course the love, and, and that is the strength of the universe, as I said. So one of the things that gets happening as we're sort of hunkered down in our little separate worlds and forced to um, live very intimately and, and closely within ourselves, with our family structures, one of the things that's happening is that we are our growing and understanding our personal power and we're doing things that um, clean out some of our old ways of thinking and it's funny because the image that I got was of cleaning closets that's that's the phrase that I got with cleaning closets but the image is that as we do these little things like nothing that we do nothing that comes um, that happens like this it it's all often it's very symbolic, you know? And you could think, I remember like in my first literary criticism class and the, the professor's going on and on about, oh, this meant this, this meant this. And I, I'm, like, I'm thinking like, did, he, did, did the author really think of all these things? But then you get down to it. I mean, and you know, so often it's true. I mean, that their things are used symbolically to help teach us. And these different levels of symbolism, this idea of cleaning closets. And I thought of, oh, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name right now, but the, the woman who 
recently became quite famous just about because she's about organizing and organizing our lives and literally organizing our closets and and this has all come about all these various like pieces to teach us this because we're we're doing these simple things, these very physical, intimate, personal acts, like literally cleaning our closets. You know, you see all these little videos of people that people are sharing on different forms of social media of the things that they're doing. I'm just cleaning. I'm literally cleaning my closets. I'm redecorating. I'm restructuring. Uh, I'm, I'm doing other things like having family meals together. Um, even though we're doing it via social media and stuff, we're having these meetings that maybe wouldn't even have taken place otherwise, you know? So it's all these things that we're doing, small things we're doing physically that are actually symbolic of the bigger picture. And what the bigger picture is, is this idea of us unifying as human beings, as a species, and coming to understand, once again, coming to re-understand, coming to understand in a bigger, uh, more solid way that we are all connected, that we are all equal, that we are all loved and lovable, and that we have a, um, a, a nature that calls on us to, to um, foster the common good. And so we have these small things that are happening that, that is um, indicative of the bigger thing that we're seeing. And the, this, is all, um, this is all helping us to remember that however you perceive God, um, I tend to say the all that is, you can say the universe, um, or God, or Heavenly Father, however you want to think of it, is, is within all of us, that we're all part of the divine. And if you can't quite put it in those terms, then we all are share the love of the divine, okay? So that is a lesson that we're being re-taught right now, like in the strongest terms. And the things that are happening within our homes are helping us hoping to make us connect that with this bigger message, okay? So then today, um, I sort of was expanding on this idea. Um, more messages came through. And the big thing was that this is not a fight. This is not a fight that we're in. Um, especially when we see these daily briefings and we talk about a battle against the virus and we and we get frustrated by these things that we just see that aren't happening along with the things that are happening it can feel like a fight but what i heard really clearly is this is not a fight this is an uncasing this is an a, a um an emergence and what they said is see see how this works together see how the smallest thing is not as small as you thought um and then the other message was that that we are all bomb in our own lives in the in, in the settling down of the planet um in the caring for each other and in the, in the restructuring of the world and what I got today also is, this is a cooperative struggle. This is a cooperative learning. This is cooperative grief. This is a cooperative restructuring. This is not about violence. This is, um, this is a struggle for reemergence. And there are many people who are, they're, they, they don't quite know it, but they're, they're fighting this restructuring. But what's going to happen is that they're old, it's old fashioned, they're thinking, and they will be left behind. There will always be people who come into the world and get um, caught up in it. 
and strive for these other things that are not part of the, the cooperation that we're, that we're undertaking right now. But it's gotten to the point, and that's why this is so big, because it got to the point where there were too many of those kinds of people in power, and just in general, too many people uh, misguided and who, who are misunderstanding. Um, and so they're not, they're not progressing and, and we need to progress. Um, so what we have is these guides. And as I said before, I've been thinking of them as the pandemic guides, but, um, but I have a new name for them because what they said was this is the rising. Um, and the way I got that is that I had this image of Ireland, right, 1917, um, and they called it the rising, and that's what I got this image of, and I'm like, this, that's what they wanted to call, this is the rising, so I, I think now I'm calling them the, the masters of the rising, and they are lovingly encouraging us and guiding us, they aren't orchestrating this, we are orchestrating this. They're lovingly guiding us through it. And they are um, trying to help. It's almost like untangling threads because there's so many of us that are misguided or have been misguided and that had misguided and, and wrong, wrong thinking, you know, ideas. There's so many of us that they're sort of helping us ent untangle these threads so that we can get a clean and pure thread um, that lifts us up and guides us to a higher place. Um, so, um, let's, see, let's see what else that they wanted to say. Um, so, so much of what's happening has been going on for a very long time, like in this country, since the inception of this country, where even at the very beginning, things kind of got muddled. Not everything was came out the way it was meant to, like somehow in the, in the translation between what uh, the founding fathers that were sort of inspired to do, it got muddled in the translations straight away, but it's become more and more muddled. And, and yet there's this thread that runs through a, a original intention and this thread of, you know, love and hope and stuff that, that runs through, but it's gotten to the point now where it's so muddled that we, as a species have, have pushed um, for something to happen, and it's happening, but also these, these guides are, are helping us, these, these masters of the rising are helping us um, to, to elevate the, the world to, to where we, we actually all want it. And this is a, a more caring, a more loving, a more just, a more connected world. Right? So that we can all grow and we can all grow in love and in truth um, instead of in growing in ways that, that don't that don't foster love and hope and charity and goodness and all these things. Um, so this this is the rising. Um, one of the things I got when I was thinking that um, when I sort of had that message, was um, what's actually a Wordsworth poem that is, um, the world is too much with us. And that's, that's where we got off track. That's what's still happening, happening with um, you know, some of these people who's, who are still in power at this point. Um, the world is too much with them. And the world has been too much with us. The world is a place that we come to experience many things, but we're not meant to be drowned in it or stifled by it or um, um, taken away from love, you know, like pulled away from love because of it. It should be just the opposite. It, it should be this, this, this place where we learn so much, where we experience so much, where we, where we bask in the beauty and the joy and the experience um, it, in a way that pushes us toward love, that pulls us to love, that expands us in love. 
uh, and not fear, and not all the other things that go along with fear, hate and aggression, violence, those kinds of things. But, you know, it is um, the energy of the planet can be dense. It can be, depending where we are, the vibration can be very low, and it's difficult. You know, once we get here, it's more difficult than we thought. Um, so, so there is this, this tendency for the world to be too much with us. It's a wonderful poem if you have, maybe I'll include it down below. Um, but it, it is that, that's the exact phrase that I heard, the sentence that I heard. So what these masters would like us to know is that the rising is continuing. It only stops if we stop it. So we are rising out of this and we're rising in love, in vibration, in elegance elevation in in potential in connection um the very like vivid image that i got is of almost like a, a net like of light and love that is on the earth now and it's connected by all of us who are part of this and who want so much for this sort of rising to keep happening and to expand and it's like we're all under the net and we're pushing it up you know, we're pushing it up. We're raising our, our vibration. And meanwhile, the, on the other side, um, they are sending the same sort of light and love and potential and vibration to us. So it's coming together from, from both spheres. And we ultimately have um, the ability to, to make it expand fully or to... Um, to you know, allow it to stop or backtrack or you know things that have happened in the, in the past. It, you know when we've had these these opportunities to change and we haven't fulfilled them. So you know we've made some progress at different times, but we haven't they haven't come to the fullness of their potential. So the main takeaways I think are um, these these little tiny lessons that we're learning every day. And I mean, they can be small things, it can be moments, um, but that we're doing and learning in our individual homes are symbolic and important and meant to help us understand the, the changes that we are trying to, to um, foster on a planetary level. So that's the one thing. So that's you know something that hopefully can make us feel good about the situation we're in. The other is that this wall that, of power that these people in power think that they have, and this is not just the United States. I mean, it's very apparent in the United States, but it's in very many other countries as well. They're not, um, they're completely penetrable. And in fact, that's the only way that they can survive, these people in power, is to have this amount of vulnerability and that is going to be um, their downfall because there's the, the power of love washes over these walls washes through these walls washes underneath these walls they cannot keep themselves invulnerable to the power of love if they did they would cease to exist if they tried to you can't nobody can on this earth but it's it's incumbent upon us to spread that love and make sure that we um, understand its power and don't cease in expanding that power and reaching out to each other because as we as we unite our our force for love and good is unstoppable so there you have messages from the, the masters of this rising. Um, the, the last message I'll leave with you is the last thing I sort of heard today in meditation was be sure to help each other and be sure to help the children. Um, many kids are having a much more difficult time with this than maybe some of us realize because we're just trying to get through the day. And this is deeper. They they need um, they need you to acknowledge that they're they're struggling as well. Um, the last thing I will say, though, uh, I just remember that I wanted to mention this is 
um, my sister Kim and her channel, and we're hoping to do a video together soon, a Zoom video. Um, she has really talked a lot about and advocated keeping a journal. And I feel like this is important too, and I feel like it's important for your children to do, if you can help them to keep a journal, even if it's pictures, even if you're writing it down. And you, you know, one of the reasons this is important, and this is one of the things that um, that was, was told to me earlier, is trust and wait, but don't forget. We have a tendency to forget. And we, in, in fact, the, the phrase I heard is, you are creatures who easily forget. So this is so important that as we come out of this, and we will come out of this, and we may come out of it sort of sooner than um, some of the projections are having now, because there's a lot of wonderful minds working to, um, to try and eradicate this or treat it, um, but it will come when it's right, when it's the right time, right? So that's, a, that's dependent upon us too. But when we come out of it, there, there will be a tendency to, to forget, you know, and we, with this momentum, and we've had this before, where we've had momentum, and then we forget too much, you know? Maybe we don't forget everything, but we forget too much. And it's these individual stories, these individual pain, the individual emotions that we're feeling right now, those are the things that you that are easiest to forget, right? I mean, you might remember, oh, you know, we had to, um, you know, live off rice and beans for a, a whole week or something like that. But this, the individual feelings of, of love or uniting or the purpose or, or what's happening, you know, the, the the difficult feelings of you know being feeling betrayed or let down or afraid those things we tend to sort of forget so this is so important so journal if you can talk on your phone record yourself have your kids do it there are there's some um, different like journaling tools that people have put together on the interwebs that you can look up and you know find print out or, or uh, maybe you can go on that online but but it is important, and I think Kim wouldn't keep giving this message um, if it wasn't something that we really needed to see here. And then obviously, um, that phrase, you know, you're creatures who easily forget, and we can't forget this time. Really. So there you have it, this um, message from these masters. I hope that, you, um, that it proves useful to you, that you're able to take some of it to heart, and that it's helpful. Please take care of each other. Um, please, you know, do what you can for yourself as well. Um, take care of yourself. It's so important because um, this love and the strength that we have and the unity that we have is stronger than any other force in the universe. So we're going to be okay. So take care. And until next time, I'm Chris and I'm your card client. Bye for now.